what this movie is about is also about the truth. And it's about once faced with it, you can't go backwards. Once you know something, you can't unknow it. And that happens for Catherine, and that happens for America. It happens for Daniel Ellsberg, too, is once something is revealed to you, what you do next is, um, is who you are. No one thought a woman could run a company, which is what makes the story so extraordinary, not only from a female perspective, but also about Ben Bradley, because Ben Bradley was macho enough and comfortable enough and secure enough that he had no problem going and working for a woman. And that took a lot of courage in those days. And I, I know from talking to everybody, he was, he was teased about that a lot, but he actually didn't care because he believed in her. The movie starts with Ben Bradley going crazy because he hears yet again there's a story that the Times has that he doesn't. And for Ben, in the beginning of the movie, that is all he cares about. He's completely apolitical, and Ben Bradley himself said that he never voted. Um, he, do, he is a journalist through and through, and the New York Times drives him bananas. And what he wants is the story, and that is all he cares about. But what he comes to care about is the truth. And then it becomes a different kind of um, a cause for him. Obviously her company was at risk and the financial situation they were in was at risk. Um, and more than that, that they could go to jail. And also she had spent her life having dinner at the White House. She had spent her life with these people. They were not foreigners to her. And I think as much as, and so there was a, it's a huge, um, it was a huge decision and she was, and in that sense, but it was, a, it was a decision to acknowledge that the world had changed. And don't forget in 1971, like Kent State, Attica, all that stuff is just bubbling up. The day that Tom and then Meryl walked into the newsroom when they were doing their makeup and hair tests, people were, they were, the jaws dropped. Because they became them. Because that kind of actor becomes the character. It was astonishing. Oh my God, Rick Carter, you, you just couldn't believe it. I mean, it was so, it was like cigarette butts, you know, that you felt like probably were smoked in 1971. Everything was perfect and yet nothing was overdone. Nothing, you know, sometimes you see period movies and people get so swept away with the details that the details become more important than the storytelling. And the beautiful thing about Stephen's crew that he's worked with and certainly Rick is that it's always in service of the movie. It's never in service of their own work. He knew exactly what the movie was every single day. And yet he came to the set and was allowed himself to discover how he was gonna shoot a scene. But he knew the movie and he knew it instantly. He knew it and then he guided everybody to the place he wanted them to be. It's the most miraculous cast. I mean, every single person in every one of your favorite TV shows is in the movie, and all of them are some of the greatest actors working. And the fact that ev all, all those people wanted to be in the movie and wanted to be in the movie with, because of what the movie was and because it was Steven, um, it was a joy. The movie was made by a lot of women. The two producers are women. Meryl's a woman. The costume designer is a woman. Lots of people on the crew were women. It was written by a woman. Um, and it's the story, uh, it's the honest story of a woman finding her voice. And I think that happened both in the making of the movie and the movie itself.